Hello everyone, welcome back to 3DX. So, a few days ago I posted a video for a stylized uh, vintage phone, which is what I have open here, and I was getting a few questions about how the uh, cord was made. Um, so that's what this tutorial is about, so let's go ahead and get to it. So, basically what the cord is, is basically just an alpha with height on it, height or normal map, whatever you want to call it. And basically that's its own layer. So here's what I got. So here's that layer for the core. And I have it all the way at the top, doesn't necessarily have to be. So the first thing I did was, obviously for the tube itself, you have to make sure that your UVs are pretty much straight. Otherwise this is not gonna work too well. So let me go ahead and open that. Let's see here where the UVs are for this. Alright, so the UVs are here on the side, and as you can see, it's pretty much a straight uh, tube for my UVs for the cord. So, for this to work, you have to make sure your UVs for that are completely straight, which if you used a CV curve tool in something like Maya, uh, it automatically gives you UVs that are straight. All you have to do is pretty much scale it and make sure that there's no distortion on it. All right, let's go ahead and go back to 3D. And uh, so for this to work, you have to make sure you add an opacity channel. By default, uh, when you start Substance and you create a new project, it just gives you the uh, uh, the basic channels, such as the base color, metallic, roughness, normal, and height. Uh, but you can always add more channels through here. So if you just click on the plus button, um, I did rearrange my window, so make sure this is under the uh, texture set settings. Uh, I believe it's under Windows and this one. So just make sure that's open somewhere. In my case, I docked it on the side here. And basically what you want to do is go to channels, click on the plus button. And in this case, we would just want to have opacity. Um, so in this case, I already added it, so I don't think it's on the list. But I could just uh, remove it. And as you can see, now if I go back, I can see that it's down here, opacity. And like I mentioned, there's a few other channels you can use, and you can even make your own. Alright, let's go ahead and add an opacity channel. Default settings should be okay. Alright, so now what we want to do is we want to create a new layer where the, the opacity is going to be in. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to click here to make a new layer. It's a fill layer, essentially. And honestly, I don't need anything here other than the opacity and probably height. So I'm just going to disable uh, roughness, metallic, although you could also uh, have that here as well if you want to change the roughness uh, specifically for that chord. But in my case, I'm just going to disable it and have the roughness be the one that's underneath. Alright, sometimes I like to leave the color on just because it makes it easier to see. So let's go ahead and leave that on for now. And opacity, we want it to be at zero, basically, because we want to uh, make parts of the uh, core disappear, basically. All right, so let's go ahead and just rename this. And now what we're going to do is going to do a right click and just add a black mask. And while, while you have the mask selected, you're going to do a right click. And what we're going to do is add a fill layer, basically or add a fill to the uh, mask itself. And basically this is going to be our opacity. And on the grayscale, this is only going to give you a grayscale every time you add a fill. Uh, basically you can only work with it in grayscale. And here we're going to look for something that we can use for, um, you know, to make it, to have some of the areas transparent. So if you click on something like bricks, for example, you see that it makes some spots disappear based on that. Um, let's call it an alpha because that's basically what this is. It's a grayscale image or an alpha. Um, but in this case, for something like a chord, uh, what I used is I used the stripe one. So let's just look for this. All right. And then I left uh, the settings, I think, at default except for the pattern. I think at this point I increased it. Let's see here. And notice that there's the weird. Um, white on the edges and that's because we have color enabled right now uh, we can just disable it if we want to at this point since we don't really need it it was just to make it a little bit easier to see all right 
let's see here. Let's go back to the fill. And I think I set this to, you know, let's look at the original. So I don't have to guess here. Uh, let's see, I set that to 78. Obviously, this will depend on uh, your model in particular because uh, depending on how you UV it, it's going to look uh, different. And then one thing I did is I changed the shift so that, um, so if it's at zero, you can see that, let me re-enable color so we can see this better. You can see that it's just uh, kind of has broken it up into pieces, but that's obviously not what we want. So let me go back to Stripe, and I think Shift so that I get this to connect. Let's see here. I think that looks good. Yeah, so it's more like a spiral at this point. So you're gonna have to play with the shift. I think in the original I set it to, let's see, I set it to 28, which I think is the same. I think I'm getting the same results. Let me see if anything looks different here. Okay, it's a little bit more uh, extreme. So you're gonna have to play with the shift a little bit and just kind of eyeball it too to make sure that the uh, but there's no seam uh, when you're like moving these, right? All right, so that's basically how you do this. So at this point, you just have to disable color, unless you want color, of course. And I think I add a height to it so that it's uh, so that it looks like an actual, so that it has volume to it. Uh, without it, it's, it's just a flat uh, surface. But when you add heights to it, it pretty much gives it that, um, you know, volume. Obviously, it's not completely perfect, as you can see here in this corner. It does look like it's there's a little bit of stretching. Uh, you could potentially fix that in the uh, uh, with your UVs. Maybe in that spot in your UVs, you can just kind of make uh, squash it a little bit so that there's a actually you no know, stretch it a little bit so that there's less stretching in the actual uh, way it's uh, projected here. So, and I think in the original, the last thing we want to do is obviously we don't want this uh, affecting the whole thing. So you can go back here to the, to the layer, add a new, uh, in this case, we're going to add a paint layer. And basically what the paint layer does is it's kind of like a mask, essentially. Um, so I'm going to go to I'm gonna mask by polygon fill. Uh, again, this strip may be somewhere else in your version. I do know I uh, moved it for my just for my personal preference, I think it by default is on the side here. Uh, but yeah, so I will only enable polygon fill. Uh, let's do object. And let's click on this. Uh, basically, I just want to paint with black. So I'm pressing X. Or, or you can just do it here. I'll set it all the way to zero. And just kind of drag on the models that don't need uh, to be transparent. So in this case, this. So that's basically what the paint is doing. It's essentially, you're using it as a mask. Alrighty, and that's basically it. That's pretty much how you can create a chord uh, using alphas. Um, obviously, this is for like a low poly type of scenario. Uh, in other cases, you would probably have to model it so that it looks nicer and better. Uh, but if you're creating a low poly model and you don't have the budget to add those as polys, you know, this is a good way to pretty much add some of that um, just by using an alpha, height, and so on. Uh, alphas as well. Alrighty, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Let me know if you guys liked it. Let me know um, if you have any other suggestions for videos in the future. And uh, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. And yeah, I'll see you in a future video, hopefully. Do you see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, 
ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and Unreal Engine, so you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything, so click on that link below, and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now, so you don't miss out.